you know, it's your boy with the Phoenix. And, uh, I've never been so happy to be wrong. Never. You know, I've been a Patriot fan since, I'd say, 2000. So I've been a fan for 16 years. <laughs> and I've never been so happy to be wrong. You know, I think with this 27 to nothing, zero, 27 to nothing, on primetime television on Thursday night, this just proves that Bill Belichick is the greatest head coach of all time. And I know a lot of people like him, a lot of people dislike him, just like a lot of people like the Patriots, a lot of people hate the Patriots. But when you have a rookie quarterback who's having his first NFL start, he was originally was your third string quarterback, goes out there and you know, I'm not saying Jacoby Brissett lit up the world because he didn't. 11 for 19, 103 yards. That's not, you know, oh my god. But the guy did run in for a touchdown. He didn't turn the ball over. He only got sat, I think, like once. Like once or twice. So, you know, no big deal. And he made the right plays when he needed to. And this Patriots defense really stepped up. You know, Brock Osweiler, you know, a guy who first two games were decent. You know, they weren't great. They weren't horrible. They were decent. He goes out there, goes 24 for 41, interception, no TDs, of course, and 196 yards. And, uh, you know, Fuller didn't, first game of his NFL career, he didn't go over 100 yards. And DeAndre Hopkins, I mean, he had 50, 50 yards, but, you know, not that we're basic, you know, not the kind of numbers we're used to seeing from DeAndre Hopkins. And I think the Texans kind of got exposed. Yes, they'll probably still, they'll, well, they'll still win the division, all right? The Colts are not a good team. Um, the Jaguars are a good team. And the Titans, they might get a few lucky wins every once in a while, but they're not going to make any noise. The Texans has the division in the bag, as expected. So, with that being said, the New England Patriots are still 3-0. And even though Robert Kowski, you know, didn't have any receptions, I don't think, and barely played, so he still, you know, he played technically, but he didn't impact the game. He didn't have a reception, you know. He was just in there to, you know, whatever. I'm sure he'll play next week against Buffalo and... <laughs> Well, Rex Ryan loves playing against uh, Rob Krakowski, so that would be beautiful as a Patriot fan. But, uh, you know, it should be interesting. I'm sure, uh, you know, supposedly there could be a chance that Jimmy G plays next week. Because remember, Patriots had, let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10 more days to rest for Jimmy Garoppolo. He has 10 more days to possibly play again. And then, you know, Tom Brady comes back October 9th against the Cleveland Browns, who are having quarterback problems themselves. But, you know, entering this game, I thought it was kind of arrogant, to be honest with you, of the Patriots organization to not even, you know, maybe bring in, even despite how bad it might be, you know, a Matt Flynn or a TJ Yates or someone who's actually had some QB experience, not great, but at least some QB experience to be a backup. Think about it. Jacoby Brissett was the only active quarterback on this roster tonight. That play, the only, that only active roster, active quarterback. Excuse me, on this roster. You know who the backup was? Julian Edelman, the number one wide receiver for the Patriots, who obviously was a college quarterback, turn wide receiver, polar opposite of Ryan Tannehill, as I mentioned last week. Julian Edelman was the number two number two quarterback on the depth chart. <laughs> and I know Legere at Blunt's, you know, 24 rush, rushing attempts, 105 yards, two TDs, and the Texans' defense just, you know, had two fumbles. You know, they had, so they had three fumbles, did they not? They had the, yeah, they had the two kickoff uh, returns that were fumbled, and of course, Lamar Miller, I believe, also fumbled. And, you know, 
I thought this Texan team was going to do more against this Patriots defense because I've been seeing that the Patriots defense this year hasn't been all lived up to be. But you know, when you have two good wide receivers and Brock Osweiler is, I think I said this in the off season, I'm still saying it now. A guy was overpaid, and I saw a lot of people in general, not naming any names. They were saying, oh, the Texans are going to be good. They're good. And they're, they're, they'll still be good for the division. Don't get me wrong. They'll still make the playoffs. They'll probably lose in the playoffs in the first round. They'll be like the Bengals. Always lose in the first round. Make the playoffs and lose in the first round. But they're just going to be mediocre. You know, it doesn't matter if you bring in a Lamar Miller or a young stud wide receiver like Fuller or a decent at best average quarterback like Brock Osweiler. And again, you gotta give a lot of credit to you know Bill Belichick because this guy is just a freaking genius when it comes to stuff like this. And you also have to think, and I know some people have said this, oh, they should trade Tom Brady and bring in Jimmy G or even the polar opposite. Keep Tom Brady, trade Jimmy Garoppolo. And you know, I don't think the Patriots will do either of those. Um, I'm sure Jimmy G will be the backup. Uh, you know, in case Roger Goodell accuses Tom Brady for cheating because he looked at the clouds and uh, Roger Goodell thinks by Tom Brady looking at the clouds he'll know the de the certain defense of the Denver Broncos. You know what I mean? Like, something absolutely ridiculous in whatever, by the way. Roger Goodell, how do you feel? Patriots 3-0 and without Tom Brady. Payback's a bitch. <laughs> but anyways... Uh, what else do I have to say? Um, I said I'm not allowed to curse in my in my monetized video, so I take that back. Payback is a bummer. It stinks. So, anyways, that's it for me. Uh, Patriots win 27 nothing. The three and zero heading into still at Gillette Stadium next Sunday, hosting the Buffalo Bills. And, um, God, I can't wait to what excuse Rex Ryan will come up with for that. Because I still think, I think Jimmy G probably will still be starting that game. I think this was just a one thing for Jacoby Brissett. But, you know, the defense, the special teams, uh, and of course, you know, Garrett Blunt really stepped up. And Brissett, too, with, you know, him running the football. I mean, he had eight rushes for 48 yards for a quarterback. I mean, too, before I end this video. As a Patriot fan, I said this on Sports Fan Entertainment's video, you know, MJ, formerly known as James Cotta TV, uh, it was really weird as a Patriot fan for so long, you know, had seen guys like Drew Bledsoe and Tom Brady and Matt Castle and other guys who have started for the Patriots, and of course Jimmy G. You know, you don't see those guys running the option. <laughs> and seeing a Bill Belichick Patriot team especially in 2016, run the freaking option. You know, this is proof that the Patriots are more than just, you know, throw down the field and, oh, they won because Tom Brady or so-and-so threw it down the field for 300-plus yards and three or four touchdowns. I mean, the Patriots threw for zero passing touchdowns in this game, and they still won. It's because their defense... It's because of the running game, they just they always find a way to win in situations like this. And I'm not gonna overreact. I'm not saying, oh, this team's winning the Super Bowl, going undefeated. No, all right, they'll still lose some games down the road, I'm sure. And I don't think this is a Super Bowl team, it's a Super Bowl contending team. Yes, yeah, Super Bowl champion. And... But again, good win for the Patriots tonight. And the Texans, yeah, you're winning that division, but I think it's safe to say. Once again, the media can lower the level of hype when it comes to El Houston Texans because this organization, man, it's just, it's there, put it that way. And I mean, again, I'm not saying that this is a bad organization. They got some good players and they got some good schemes. They got some good uh, plays in their system. But when it comes to the elite teams like the Steelers, the Broncos, the Patriots, you know, and God knows if they face some of the teams in the NFC, uh, see, it will be elite team. I don't know about the Seahawks, they can pay me score. But let's just say they're facing a team like Arizona, uh, they would probably get their you know what's kicked. So, 
all I'm saying is, if you ever have a Super Bowl contender in your mind, think them facing the Texan team. They're most likely going to win because this organization just continues to. And I don't care how good Javon Clowney is. I don't care how good J.J. Watt is. I don't care how good Fuller is. I don't care how Brock Osweiler is. My going, how good Lamar Miller is or DeAndre, because those guys do have talent. Obviously, I'm not saying any of that, but the way they're being coached and the way they don't show up, particularly in prime time games, is just to me. If I was a Texan fan, very concerning. That's just me. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, check out webpausegames.com. As usual, the link down in the description box. Got over 100 Halloween games on there, guys. It's crazy, but cool at the same time. Uh, follow me on Twitter. The link will be down in the description box as well. And guys, if you want to see more videos like this, please feel free to subscribe down below this subscription button is literally right there it's for free come on it's not gonna hurt tell your friends tell your cousins tell your family tell your cousins tell your family brothers sisters aunts uncles girlfriend i don't care that's it for me hope you guys enjoyed it peace